Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So this week we are going to talk about dental hygiene duties. So what are some of the dental hygiene duties? What are you supposed to be doing when you walk into the office every day? What um, types of things are we legally allowed to do? What types of things are we not legally allowed to do? Let's go over some of those today so you guys can get a better idea for what an average day is like. So first thing in the morning if you come in, you're gonna obviously turn the lights on, um, start up the computers, start up the, uh, fill the ultrasonic, start the autoclave if you need to. Say there's instruments that are dirty from the night before, you need to get those running so they're ready to go for the day. Um, there's, there's a lot of stuff, you gotta put water in the bottles and make sure the rooms are set up, unlock the front door. Uh, there's just a lot to go through. So once you've done kind of your chores for the morning, then you start going through the schedule and you check and see, you know, kind of eyeball what it is you're gonna be doing that day. Do you have anything out of the normal, um, such as say you're doing scaling root planing or are you doing uh, sealants that day? Are you taking impressions for a night guard? Something that's not just your basic cleaning and an exam and, you know, x-rays or something. Uh, so you just kind of get a, a basic view of what the schedule is for the day. At that point, I usually actually sit down and go through all of my charts for the day so I know in detail who's coming in, what they need to have done, if they have anything special I need to keep in mind. This one needs a pillow, that one can only be sat back 45 degrees or they get vertigo. Um, this one is highly anxious and we're going to need some essential oils in the room. Um, this one doesn't like profi paste, that one doesn't like, you know. So you go through that kind of stuff and then you, of course you're looking at um, what they need for that day as far as are they due for uh, the exam, are they due for x-rays, are they due for a perio charting. And then you're looking also at things like what treatment plan have they had worked on recently for the doctor and what um, do they have any upcoming treatment that we need to talk about today? You know, there's a crown that was diagnosed six months ago and they haven't done it yet. How's that doing? Are they thinking about it? You need to kind of bring it up. Um, so that's some of the some of the basic stuff you're looking at when you look at the charts in the morning. Okay, so once I'm done with the charts in the morning, I usually have little maybe sticky notes or something somewhere in the room that the patient can't see, but I can kind of reference as far as what their likes and dislikes are, what they're due for, and which doctor is seeing them, what kind of treatment plan they still need to go with, and and you know that kind of stuff. So I've got that set aside. As soon as the patient comes in, you go out to the lobby, you greet them. You bring them back, um, make sure the front desk has given them any paperwork that they might need for like a health history form or insurance update or any of that kind of stuff. Bring them back to your room. If this is the first time you've met them, obviously you're gonna greet them in the lobby, shake their hand, introduce yourself, and then walk them back to the chair. If this is somebody you've seen before, I like to keep it a little more casual where it's like, hey, how's it going? How's your summer? What's going on? Um, and kind of walk them back to your room seat them down and then I immediately start by going over their health history. Has anything changed in their health in the last six months since I've seen them or even three months or sometimes it's the week before. It just kind of depends on what they're in for. Um, so go over the health history and always do that. Even if you saw them four days ago, you're still gonna go over it again because stuff happens and you need to know. Um, so for health history, a lot of times they'll immediately start talking about their teeth. So I uh, will say, you know, any changes in your general health diagnosed with anything, broken anything, had your flu shot, had, you know, just kind of jog their mouth, throw some stuff out there, just kind of jog their memory so they uh, start thinking about their health. And a lot of times they'll say, oh no, you know, everything's good or, or yes, and, and sometimes they've already filled out the form up front, so that's good, but I always double check with them. And then if I have a list in their digital chart of their medications, I always go over those with them to make sure nothing has changed there, if they've added any new ones. And then I always ask them about supplements. Do you take a multivitamin? Are you on birth control? Um, are you taking anything like uh, garlic or um, I don't know, just different different things that can you know affect or that people typically don't think about? They'll think about the prescription medications. They never think about the supplements. So I'll list off some supplements. You know, vitamin C, multivitamin, that kind of stuff, and people go, Oh yeah, yeah, I am taking that stuff. So that's good. Um, after that. Typically we try and take, if you have time, we try and take a um, blood pressure because blood pressure is caught more often in a dental office, actually, high blood pressure, than it is in your, den or your doctor's office because most people will go to their dentist before they go to their doctor. So 
Um, it's a good thing to always check. Uh, the next thing I ask them is, do they have any complaints about their teeth? Anything the doctors need to know about? Is there anything that has been cold sensitive? You know, again, if it's a new patient, I go over this stuff in, in detail because I want to make sure um, I'm not going to miss anything. A lot of people have cold sensitivity. If that's the case, then I'm going to want to spray water on their tongue and not directly on their teeth and not like shoot them into the ceiling, which never goes over well. So I always try and you know make them as comfortable as possible. So those are the kinds of questions you need to think about asking when you first sit a patient down. The last question I ask is what flavor of polish they would like. And a lot of people want, you know, mint or cinnamon. Those are kind of the two main ones. And then we always keep a variety of other stuff, um, vanilla, chocolate, grape, watermelon, and are those the ones we have right now? I think that's everything we have right now. And we just kind of rotate them out. So they're, they're a little different all the time, which is kind of fun. Um, and they always find that is just kind of a funny question. It kind of breaks the ice a little bit too. So then I will, bib, while I'm doing this, I'm like bibbing the patient and um, kind of evaluating them just visually to make sure they look like they're okay. How nervous are they? Um, you know, uh, and then I'll start talking to them about, you know, what do you do for work, especially because this is their first time in. Mm -hmm. So you lean them back. I do an oral cancer screening first. So I always check the mouth. I'm looking for sores. I'm looking for anything abnormal in the tissues. If I find anything or if they're open to it, we do Velscope exams, which is a light that we shine around. So next step, then you're looking at like restorations. What is, if this is a new patient, you're looking at, you know, what do they, ha what have they had done in their mouth at other offices? And you're going to chart that. Um, so, you know, where they've had fillings, where they've had crowns, where they've had root canals, if they've had teeth missing, all that gets charted. Then if it's, you know, a new, if it's not a new patient, then you're going to look at what was done last time in our office. Has anything been done? And was that charted correctly? Something I forgot to mention, um, before I lay the patient back, I always take their x-rays. If there's uh, any complaints over, you know what, yeah, I've had this tooth, it's been bothering me, it's keeping me up at night, you know, anything that could indicate that there's an actual problem with the tooth and not just cold sensitivity because they're clenching and grinding or they're chewing on ice or something. Um, so if there's like a legitimate reason, I always take, uh, it's called a PA of uh, a single tooth, and uh, if they need like their yearly, I always take the four bite wings. If they're due for the full series, which we take every three to five years typically, then we'll take those. But we make sure that x-rays are done before you lay the patient down so you're not having to sit them up and lay them down all the time because that gets really annoying. So then the next thing I do after laying the patient back is a perio chart where I chart the gums and make sure everything's healthy. They haven't developed any what we call deep pockets. Um, there's no bleeding, gingivitis is under control, or if this person has had like a deep cleaning in the past, did it help? Are they stable? I'm looking for blood, I'm looking for pus, I'm looking for anything abnormal, uh, anything above like a three, well take for me more like a four, anything above a four millimeter pocket um, that's bleeding. Uh, if you get fours that aren't bleeding, that have been there for a while, I keep an eye on those, but I don't freak out about those. So just more stuff to kind of think about. So once I'm done with the perio chart, then usually we start the cleaning at that point. Um, depending on what type of cleaning you're doing, you're going to crank out the hand instruments or maybe the ultrasonic and, uh, you know, clean all the tartar off the teeth, remove stain, remove plaque. And then when you're done, then you polish and floss and buzz the doctor to have the doctor come in. Um, while you're doing the cleaning, you're educating. So you're talking about you know what kinds of toothbrushes the people are using, what kind of flossing or medicaments they're using. Um, we're talking about nutrition. You talk about their diet. You talk about how their nutrition is affecting everything. You talk about how their medications are causing dry mouth, which will cause cavities. So you're you're not only talking about you know hey how's your summer going what kind of vacation plans do you and the kids have you're also talking about the more important stuff um their their health that's why you're what's why they're there okay so as you're waiting for the exam then you're going to be talking to them about their upcoming cleanings um anything you need to go over as far as hey you know you, you kind of spotted this you want the doctor to take a closer look at it so you can kind of prep them for maybe um what the doctor might say uh, again, you're not allowed to legally diagnose, but you can kind of give them a heads up anyway. 
um, schedule their six month appointments, make sure that's done, go get them their little goodie bag full of stuff. Um, there's just some little duties you can kind of do while you're waiting for the doctor to come in and do the exam. Once the, the doctor's in doing the exam, you're taking notes, you're putting stuff on the route slip to make sure the people up front are going to know what to do with this patient when they get up front. Um, how, you know, what, what tooth needs work, what surface on that tooth needs work, and how much time the dentist is going to want to get that done. So all of that goes on the route slip. Um, when the doctor's done, you sit the patient up remove the bib, you know, get, get all their stuff together. You're going to take them up front and then you hand them off to the front desk and you say, okay, you know, we're done. We did this, this, and this. This doctor is the one that did the exam. I've already set up their six month. They need this, this, and this done on these surfaces. We're going to break this into two different appointments. I want an hour for this and, and half hour for that with this doctor. And you kind of walk the front desk through it. Um, you wave goodbye, shake their hand, whatever you want to do. Sometimes they want to give you a hug with the patients. And then you, um, you know, run back to the back, clean your room, throw your instruments in the ultrasonic, anything that's in the ultrasonic, you take out, you bag, you stick in the autoclave, um, you, depending on what you did, you may want to run your lines between, which means you're running um, water and um, like enzyme through your, through your suctions and stuff. Um, you know, set back up and head back out to the lobby because the next one's waiting and it's probably impatient to get back and get out of there. So that's kind of your day. So let's move back into the house where it's not windy and we'll go through kind of the rest of the hygiene duties. Okay, a little less windy in here. Let's try this. So other duties for dental hygienists. Um, I mean, let's just go through kind of everything. So obviously you go through people's health histories with them. There's a lot of educating going on. There's a lot of nutritional advising going on. Um, oral cancer screenings are kind of a big one. So you have the Bellscope. There's a couple of different ones you can learn to use, which is cool. You do a visual exam every time and it's not just cancer you're looking for. You're obviously looking for lesions and just anything abnormal. Uh, so that's something that you will learn that always has to be done. X-rays is kind of a big duty for hygienists. There are a lot of offices that have the assistants or even a hygiene assistant take x-rays. At my office, we do everything. We do our own x-rays, we do our own perio charting. We do not have an assistant to clean our rooms. We do all of it ourselves. And personally, I like that. I am, I guess, kind of a control freak in, in that way, but I'm also, I don't feel like it's anybody else's job to do that kind of work. That's what I'm getting paid to do, so that's something that I should be doing. Obviously, perio charting is a big one. A perio chart where you're going through one, two, three, three, two, three, three, two, seven, whatever. Um, just so you guys know who are not in hygiene, uh, one, twos, and threes are considered normal and healthy, and that's measured in millimeters on that little stick that we use. Uh, four is kind of a borderline. Five and over means we've lost bone around that area of the tooth. And of course, then again, we're looking for bleeding, we're looking for pus, we're looking through for anything that is also on top of, say, a, a larger pocket. We're looking at recession, we're looking at mobility of the tooth. Is it moving where it shouldn't be? Um, um, all those things get charted when we're, when we're looking at a patient. So that's something you learn in school and something that you do every day, all the time. Scaling and root planing. So there's different types of cleanings. You learn how to do a basic profi, which is kind of a above the gums, uh, get the tartar off, get the plaque off, get the stain off. And then there's the below the gum stuff, like scaling root planing. There's a new code now, um, scaling in the presence of inflammation. And where you're, you're working on what we used to call bloody profis, where people come in and they're not deep enough to do a deep cleaning on, but they're also bleeding like crazy and you're changing your gloves multiple times and you're up to your elbows and blood and that's always fun. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> but you see a lot. So there's different types of cleanings. There's those three and then there's um, a perio maintenance which is a cleaning after a scaling and root cleaning. So they've had the deep cleaning. You've gotten them numb. You got all that stuff off. Then they're coming in every three to four months to maintain what you've done. Um, and we can go into, you know, the different types of cleanings and why you do them in a different video if you guys are interested. But different types of cleanings are some of your duties. So local anesthetic and nitrous are both duties of the hygienist depending on which state you're in. Um, some states, from what I understand, don't allow it and some states do. It kind of depends on the state. 
So in Colorado, we are allowed to do both. And as long as there is a dentist on site, he doesn't have to be standing over my shoulder watching, but he needs to be on site. And so we can give all the shots and we give nitrous. And um, getting people numb is not my favorite thing to do either. I'm not a big fan of needles. So if I can get away with it, I don't get them numb. Uh, but if they're flinching during the probings, then yes definitely get them numb. So that's another one of our duties. Placing medicaments subgingively, we are allowed to put um, different types of antibiotics and things in underneath the gums. Um, after you say you do a deep cleaning, the scaling replaning, then you can take something like, it's called a Restin, uh, which is an antibiotic in kind of a powder form, and that gets injected in under the gums and sits there for about 10 days. Um, so that is part of our duties. Some offices do it, some offices don't. I haven't used it in this office. I've been in the last couple of years. Um, I have worked in other offices where I used it all the time. Fluoride varnish and sealants. So fluoride varnish is typically used uh, on children. Uh, we call it their vitamins. Um, I have conflicting feelings on fluoride, but we won't get into that. Um, but yeah, we typically do it on the kids if the par parent requests it and uh, it can also be used for people with sensitivity and if they have uh, sensitive teeth, then fluoride can help with that as well. So we'll do that. That's part of hygiene duties. Hygiene duties also include sealants and if you're not familiar, sealants are a resin that we, it's, it's like a plastic that we stick on the tops of the teeth and the deep grooves of the molars. Um, sometimes premolars, but typically just the molars as they come in. Um, that is the last part of the tooth to really solidify, and so it tends to be really soft in those deep grooves. Um, and that's where you're packing all that food. So it tends to get cavities very quickly in small children. So you put sealants in there to kind of, you know, save that area, protect that area until that solidifies. Eventually, as an adult, they tend to wear off. So that's something you learn to do in school, and it's kind of fun to do on the kids. Um, suppose that I do need an assistant with. It just takes more hands, but that's that's actually a fun duty. I enjoy doing communication. That. Communication is really key. That dentist stands up out of that chair and walks out of their room, and those patients will look at you and go, "What did they say?" A lot of times, dentists are really bad at communicating in a way that the patients understand. Like we're so used to speaking dentalese that we forget a lot of people don't understand the Latin that we're using. Um, and so you'll have patients turn to you and go, what's a crown? What's a filling? What do they mean sealants? What is this sealant thing? And so your job is to translate. You will sit there and you will make sure they absolutely understand what the doctor's wanting to do about that implant, how an implant works, what's it made out of, how many steps it takes. You need to know all of that so when a patient asks you, you can walk them through the process of whatever this is gonna be. Um, and patients trust you because you're they're laying in your lap they trust you sometimes more than the dentist, and you need to be their advocate. So make sure you know what's going on as far as their treatment plan, so you can sit there and discuss it with them. Oral hygiene, uh, we kind of discussed that. You're doing a lot of educating as far as toothbrush brushing techniques and flossing techniques and how often to, and you're sitting there with them in a mirror and you're dyeing their teeth and you're brushing it off, and a lot of that's with the kids. We walk them through that and we show them how to brush teeth and gums together at a 45 degree angle, you know, and they come in the next time around and things look so much better. They're so proud of themselves and that's really, it's very rewarding. So then you have things like stocking your drawers, ordering, um, sometimes ordering for the office goes through the assistant, sometimes it goes through the hygienist, it just kind of depends on the office. Um, know how many toothbrushes you're going to need for the next six months so you can order those from whatever company. Um, there's just, there's a lot, there's a lot you do in a day. And you know, you don't have to have to do it all the time, but there's computer work to know and there's obviously lots of sterilization to know there's just there there's a lot of stuff you you keep very busy during your day people go do you get bored you're like, you don't have time to get bored you don't have time to pee like there's no time to get bored so it's the very end of the day go through your charts make sure all of your notes are completed and accurate um sign out of all the computers stock the room set up for the next day walk out of the door and go Phew, we're done and then forget about it and then the next day you go back in fresh and you do it again and it's always a lot of fun. It's always an adventure. Well, it's not always a lot of fun, but it's definitely always an adventure. <laughs> it kind of depends on your, your personality and your way of looking at stuff. 
If you're a glass half empty, this is not a job for you. <laughs> Sad. Okay, so that was dental hygiene duties and kind of a basic walkthrough of what an average day is. Um, I would like at some point to go through like an actual appointment with you guys. There are, are other hygienists that have done that though on YouTube and they probably do it better than I could. So check them out. I found a couple of girls that do some really nice hygiene videos, way better than what I can do. So make sure and find them and check, you know, subscribe to them, check out their channels because they've got some good stuff for you guys. Um, I guess, you know, like and subscribe. I'll see you next week. If you have any comments, please comment below. I love trying to answer those for you. And find me on Instagram. What else? I think that's about it. So yeah, have a great week and I will talk to you later. Bye.